uh, and risk, the hemorrhage risk. Uh, and although I kind of alluded to earlier, the, the types of aneurysms associated with the AVM are feeding RV aneurysms. These are flow-related aneurysms and also intranidal aneurysms and remote aneurysms. These are totally unrelated aneurysms that may be, say, in the other hemisphere, for example. So what's the difference? Feeding RV aneurysm you saw in the example, these are aneurysms that occur on a vessel that feeds the AVM. In this particular case, uh, the vessel that's feeding the AVM is the anterior cerebral artery. So you have an anterior communicating artery aneurysm. So these, just like your regular aneurysms in a patient who doesn't have an AVM, have, can have a significant risk of hemorrhage uh, per year, depending on the ca characteristics of the aneurysm. But in addition, in an AVM, there is very high flow through the feeding artery. Uh, and so aneurysms in an AVM probably have even a higher risk of hemorrhage than your run of the mill aneurysm of the exact same shape and size. What about intranidal aneurysms? So these are aneurysms that occur within the AVM itself. This is a tiny AVM. You can see the blep there, which is an intranidal aneurysm. In this particular patient, it was this intranidal aneurysm that actually hemorrhaged um, and caused the AVM to rupture. Uh, what about pattern of venous drainage? Does that affect the hemorrhage risk? Uh, and just to define venous drainage uh, more clearly, superficial venous drainage uh, are basically things that drain to the superficial sinuses. And these are the superior sagittal sinus, the transverse sinus, the sigmoid sinus, and the cavernous sinus. The deep um, venous uh, system are considered internal cerebral veins. So these are all the things that drain basal ganglia, thalamus, that sort of thing. Basal vein of Rosenthal, vein of Galen, and the precentral cerebellar vein, which um, as a reminder, drains into the vein of Galen. Now, a point uh, of uh, confusion sometimes occurs with the post with AVMs in the posterior fossa, so in the cerebellum. So the only superficial uh, venous drainage in the posterior fossa would be cerebellar veins that drain directly into the straight sinus or, in the, or to the transverse sinus. So here's an example. This is an example of a superficial, uh, a, a superficial venous drainage. This is a vein of Trollard draining to the superior sagittal sinus. And this is an example of a, a very large AVM that's draining into very large uh, basal vein of Rosenthal in the vein of Galen. So this is a deep venous drainage system. What about special Martin grading? So before we spend any more time on the special Martin grading, uh, no, it does not affect hemorrhage risk. Remember, special Martin grading is only meant to assess surgical risk, not the natural history. Now, to look at the natural history, there was a landmark study that was done back in 2006 uh, that's usually refer, often referred to as the New York Island study. And this was a study that came out of uh, Columbia, where the authors looked at the effect of deep venous drainage, deep location, on the risk of hemorrhage of an AVM. And as you can see, there's a huge gradient for differences in risk depending on what features there are. Um, here on the x-axis, you see no hemorrhage, meaning an unruptured AVM, hemorrhage meaning the AVM had presented to the hemorrhage. So even in a, for a superficial AVM with no deep venous drainage and no deep location, the risk of hemorrhage from an AVM that had previously ruptured is five times that of an unruptured AVM. However, as you move along this axis here, you see on the other end of the spectrum, an AVM that is uh, deep in location and has deep venous drainage, even if it were unruptured, already has an eightfold risk, a higher risk of hemorrhage than an AVM that has that's not deep and that has no deep, deep venous drainage. And even more so in the highest category here of an AVM that had previously ruptured is deep and has deep venous drainage. 
the risk of hemorrhage there is a 34 fold that of the lowest category of ADMs. And so you can see this fact, the features that we talked about are very important in terms of understanding the natural history of an ABM. And this will become important when you counsel a patient in terms of treatment. The, uh, this is a meta-analysis that was done. And in any case, this, this table is really meant to show you the results of the natural history study of a few large studies that were done in the 2000s. The, um, as you can see, the results aren't always consistent across the different studies. The typical things that people looked at are the things we talked about, prior hemorrhage, deep location, venous drainage, associated aneurysm, female sex, small size, older age. But uh, when a meta-analysis is done of all of these studies, what was found is that prior hemorrhage, deep location, exclusive deep venous drainage, and associated aneurysm are basically the main risk factors for rupture in terms of the natural history of an ABM. Uh, and unlike what uh, in the past were thought to be true or were controversial, there's no effect of the sex, the size of the AVM or age uh, on the risk of rupture uh, of, the, of an AVM. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you liked that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.